Hey guys, uh, no, we never got that second Honda gasket video out, but the you know, video camera stopped working, and guy needed his car back, and we had to finish the job. Uh, but we decided, you know, everybody's been asking for us to do something, getting mad at us, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a narration to some pictures that'll hopefully help you guys out. We're going to be using pictures from LightningMotorsports.info. But if you guys want some higher resolution pictures and some more help, you should uh, check out the site. It can help you out. In these clips, an engine stand is being used, but you do not need to remove the engine from your Honda in order to change the blown head gasket. Jack up the car on the driver's side. Put jack stands under the car and remove the driver's side wheel. You're going to need this to access some of the parts. Then take a second jack, put a piece of wood on it, and place the jack under the engine oil pan. The reason is that you'll need to support the engine with this jack when the uh, engine mount is removed from the head. Uh, you only have to touch the oil pan and uh, don't put any upward force on it. Remove the bolts that attach the head to the engine mount. Remove the five upper intake manifold bolts. Remove the four lower intake manifold bolts. Then remove the two lower manifold support bracket bolts. Remove any vacuum lines and hoses. There will be dozens of these. It is best to put masking tape on them and number them so you know where to reconnect them later. It makes it a lot easier. Remove the three bolts on the header's heat shield. If you haven't already, you need to remove the lower manifold support bracket bolts. Remove the exhaust manifold bolts then take off the uh, nuts that are holding on the valve cover and remove the spark plug wire cover. You can remove the plugs after uh, detaching the clips that are holding in the wires. Remove the two cover bolts that are just above the belt. That's for the timing cover bolts. And last you uh, remove all of the rest of the nuts enabling you to take the valve cover off. Remove the timing belt tensioner plug, which is just above the crankshaft pulley, and now you should be able to remove the timing belt. Remove the bolts that are in between the two cam gears. Locate the key that keeps the cam gear in the correct position on the camshaft. It gets dropped and lost very easily. Now remove the cam gear and cam gear key. Use a 10 millimeter end wrench and a flathead screwdriver. Loosen the nuts on the valves and unscrew the valve adjusting screws until the screws are part way out. Halfway out or so is fine. Remove the holder plates that are over the camshafts. There are 11 bolts. Note that the HF1, which is stamped on the plate, means that it is the intake side of the head. HF2 is the exhaust side uh, to help you orient the plate when you reinstall it. Remove the two rocker shaft orifices next to where the cam gears were by screwing a bolt a few turns and pulling up. You of course need to keep track of which is which. Put them in a labeled baggie uh, uh, for safety to keep them straight. Remove any visible alignment pins and o-rings. Uh, put those in a baggie as well. Remove the three bolts that are holding the distributor in place. Remove the camshafts and mark them so they are returned to the same side of the head. If you mix them up, you can still figure them out because the intake cam has a slot on it for the distributor shaft. Next, remove the rocker shaft sealing bolt and the three VTEC solenoid valves. Remove the radiator hose as well as the adapter that connects the hoses to the engine. Slide the rocker shaft out of the engine while holding the three pieces together with a tape or rubber band. Again, keep track of which is which. Use a tiny pry bar to pull up on the lost motion assembly for each of the four cylinders. Keep track of which is which. Use the oil pan jack. Jack the engine slightly until the engine weight is taken off the mounting bolts. This is visible by the uh, mount just rising a little bit. It'll be obvious. The engine should not be pushing either up or down on the mounting bolts. If it moves a quarter of an inch up, that's enough to assume that the weight is off. Find the engine mount that goes from the engine to the head. Remove the bolts. The engine is now fully supported by the jack under the engine. By the way, it is pathetic to mount an engine on a car by attaching the engine mount to the head. Please stop that, Honda. Nobody else does it. The ten head bolts will be loosened a bit at a time using the standard head bolt pattern as shown in this diagram.
Start with bolt 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. First just break all the bolts in the sequence. Then loosen them a quarter of a turn in sequence. Then half a turn in the sequence. Then a couple of full turns and then loosen them all the way out. Remove them. Keep track of which bolt went to which hole. Label the bolts with masking tape or put each one in its own labeled baggie. Now lift the head straight up. A couple gentle wraps with a rubber mallet will sometimes be needed to loosen the grip of the head gasket. Take the head gasket out and clean the mating surface of the head with a plastic scouring pad so that it is smooth and shiny as a mirror. So once you get the head off, it's best to check it, see if it's warped. You know, you can bring it into a shop and let them check it out and recondition it if it needs to be. So if you guys want to check out the head and see what kind of shape it's in, my brother has a video up, you know, same YouTube name, Yeech Blitz, um, Volkswagen 2.0 liter head gasket uh, repair something, and uh, they teach you how to check it out yourself and see if it needs to be replaced or reconditioned. There are a lot of good aftermarket head gaskets you can buy on eBay that work well for about $40 or so. So you don't necessarily have to buy the expensive head gasket from the Honda dealer. The only complication is that aftermarket gaskets can require a different final torque for the head bolts than the original Honda gasket. So be aware of this. Some people recommend getting new head bolts because the, new, the old head bolts stretch out if the engine was uh, overheated. We just used the old ones and it worked out okay for us. Before you put the head gasket back on, turn the crankshaft with a 19 millimeter socket until the top dead center mark is on the pointer on the engine, as in this diagram. This is done inside the wheel well on the driver's side. Last, as they always say, installation is the reverse of removal. A couple of things though. When you put the head gasket back on, be clean about it so there's no dirt or rag filaments on either side of the gasket. You need to tighten the head bolts in the opposite sequence starting between the second and third cylinder is shown in this diagram. So you tighten bolt number one first and number two. Only tighten them a little bit at a time or the head will warp and the head gasket will still leak. First insert the bolts until finger tight, then go through the sequence and tighten them to 22 foot-pounds, then go through the sequence and tighten them to 62 foot-pounds, and now you should be done if you're using a Honda made uh, head gasket. When the camshaft and cam gears are installed, turn them before you install them so that the three dot marks on the cam gears line up with the same marks on the head. Then you put the timing belt back on, making sure the rotation of the camshaft and crankshaft are both on the top dead center marks, or the engine will run poorly, if at all. I hope this has been somewhat of a help, but uh, it can be kind of tough on these engines, and I know it's a different difference between the videos and the pictures and the you know guys using the engine stand but uh hopefully you guys will be able to complete it alright. If you have any questions uh feel free to comment and see if I can help you out. If best of luck to you.